Mediation, moderation, conditional indirect effects, multi-level analysis. We at the Bread Lab, the behavioral lab at Darden, put together a series of workshops to explain when and how we should adopt this analysis, especially when conducting research. My name is Cristiano Guarana. I'm a fellow at the Bread Lab. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Bread Lab. Uh, we will start with a mediation and move through all these analyses. There are five sessions on mediation and moderation, five sessions on conditional interact effects, and two sessions on multi-level multi analysis. Um, most of the examples that I will use come from the organizational behavior theories. My background is on organizational behavior. I do research on leadership, I do research on engagement, sleep, decision-making processes. So I'm more comfortable with those theories, those examples. However, the analytical tools, the processes that we use to analyze our data can be, can be applied to a strategy or consumer behavior, for example, many other areas. If you are a beginner, I would recommend you to watch all the sessions from the beginning to the end. Uh, there is a logical progression through all these sessions. If you are a advanced user of methods, yes, you can pick and choose and go straight to the sessions that are more useful for you that you can benefit most from. Uh, so another thing that I must tell you, so this is a very applicable workshop. So if you want, you can use your own data set and run your analysis, but you can also download our data set that we at the Bread Lab put together so you can have a way to practice and actually run the models that we'll be talking about through all these sessions, through all these workshops. Shall we begin? The first session is on mediation, and this is the agenda for today. Well, we start with an overview of mediation. What is mediation? Why do we need mediation? And then we will talk about the traditional and current tests for mediation. So what is mediation? Mediation, when we are theorizing about mediation models, we look at the mechanism. We look at the process through which our independent variable influences our dependent variable. As an example, uh, how job meaningfulness influences job performance. What is the mechanism? How it influences job meaningfulness influences job performance. That's why we need mediation models. And usually when you see mediation models, this is the figure that you uh, will see in the paper. Okay? So you have the independent variable, uh, leading to the dependent variable via the mediator. Three different paths in the model, A, B, and C. The most traditional way to test for mediation uh, came from Baron Kenny. They published a paper in 1986, and they described how we should test for mediation. That was a huge advancement for us because, because it gave us a consistent way to test for mediation, to test for mediating models. Um, according to them, the first step is to have a significant relationship between our independent variable and our dependent variable, meaningfulness and job performance. If you have that, if you have that significant relationship, you move to our step two. And then you needed to find a significant relationship between an, your independent variable and your mediator. In our example, job meaningfulness and job engagement. If you have that, if you have the significant relationship, you move to step three. And now you are looking for the relationship between your mediator and your dependent variable, engagement and job performance. If that's significant, that's great because you have initial uh, support for your mediating model. What you have to do next is to run a model in which you have your independent variable, your dependent variable, and you control for the mediator. What you are looking for is the difference in that uh, coefficient between the independent variable and the dependent variable. If that 
relationship goes to zero, you have full mediation. If that relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable decreases, you have partial mediation. Well, this language, full mediation and partial mediation, uh, has not been used very often uh, since, uh, th since the most current models, the most current tests were proposed. But if you're reading papers um, that were published up to, let's say, tw uh, 2012, okay, you may find this language embedded in the paper. So it's good to know what that really means. Uh, once you did that, once you ran these four different steps, you went through all these four different steps and ran four different models, uh, it's time to do a Sobel test, according to Barry McKinney. The Sobel test uh, was proposed to check if this indirect effect was significant or not. And this is another language indirect effects. Okay? When we are running mediation models, uh, the other way to say that, to describe that, is to say that, well, the indirect effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable via the mediator is significant or not. Okay? So keep in mind those different languages, mediators, indirect effects. And once you have an indirect effect model, you'll do a Sobel test. Uh, the problem with a Sobel test is that um, one of the assumptions is that the indirect effect coefficient has a normal distribution. But we know now that, based on Monte Carlo simulations, that indirect effects, they are not normally distributed. So you are, there is this violation of this assumption. So I strongly recommend you to not adopt Sobel tests when you are conducting mediation models or when you are looking for the indirect effects. There is a better way to do that. And the best way or the better way is running a bootstrapping analysis. With bootstrapping analysis, you get a confidence interval. This is a non-parametric test. So there is no assumption about the distribution of the indirect effect. Now, with this resampling process, you can get this 95% confidence interval and look if zero is in the middle or is in this confidence interval. If zero is in the confidence interval of your bootstrapping, well, you do not, you do not, you don't have an indirect effect. You don't have evidence for an indirect effect. But if zero is not in the confidence interval, Yes, then you have evidence for the indirect effect. But now what people are doing, what we researchers are doing, is actually adopting a current way, our current test for mediation. And this test has been proposed by Hayes. According to Hayes, you do not have to have a significant relationship between your independent variable and your dependent variable. And the reason is, well, you, have, you may have competing mediators that would cancel, each, uh, would cancel the effects, the direct effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable. Let me give you an example. So uh, it could be that job engagement is one uh, mediator. And we know, I mean, job meaningfulness would have a positive effect on job engagement, which, have a, which could have a positive relationship with task performance. But if the other path is, let's say, task complexity or perceptions of task complexity, the more meaningful the job is, the less complex that uh, task could appear to you, could be perceived by you. And then there is a negative relationship there. And we know that task complexity has a negative relationship with job performance. So engagement and task complexity or perceptions of task complexity have opposing effects on the performance, on the DV. So we could not have a significant effect or main effect or direct effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable. So yeah, according to Hayes, we don't have to have this direct effect, a significant direct effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable. So then the second step in our traditional test becomes the first step for Hayes' uh, process, if you want to, to call that uh, the 
process developed by Hayes. Uh, so now we, na we have to have a significant effect between our independent variable and our mediator, meaningfulness and engagement. And we also have to have a significant effect between our mediator engagement and our dependent variable job performance. Um, so the fourth step in the traditional test, well, we don't need that as well because we don't need it to have a main effect. Uh, and according to Hayes, we should not do the Sobol test. And the reason I just ex explained to you, we violate, uh, the, when we uh, conduct uh, a Sobol test, we are violating one of the assumptions, which is the indirect effect has a normal distribution. We go straight to the bootstrapping. And uh, again, bootstrapping is a non-paramedic test. You can get a, a confidence interval and you can, uh, more precisely, it's a more robust test for your indirect effect, for your mediating uh, mediation models. In this session, we covered a few important things. First, we described what mediation is. Okay? We are looking at the mechanism of the relationship between your independent variable and your dependent variable. And then we explained the traditional and the current tests for mediation models. Thank you.